Uh, okay, so we're gonna start again. Uh, hello, this is um, Tuesday, July the 11th, and this is the Kubernetes release meeting. Uh, my name is Veronica Lopez. And no, it was not your headphones, Joseph. <laughs> it was mine. Um, yeah, so we're already recording. Um, but I want to remind you that uh, these meetings, uh, we'd like to conduct them under the Kubernetes uh, code of conduct. So please be uh, very nice to each other. And yeah, so let's go ahead with the recurring topics in the agenda today that I posted on the, on the chat. So I believe, Marco, you have several uh topics today oh but first uh thank you joe for taking notes and do we do we have any new members so i would like to say hi hey this is amit i uh, this is the first time i'm joining today hello amit uh, anything you would like to share about you yourself? Uh, I'm based out of Australia. Um, I am a DevOps specialist uh, within the consulting setup here based in Australia. Recently uh, gave a talk at ArgoCon in um, Europe. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That's great. Uh, we're very happy that you're here. Is there anyone else? I would like to say hi. If not, okay. Uh, well, welcome, Emmet. Uh, and now, let's go to the recurring topics. I believe that Marco has several, so please go ahead. Hey, uh, yeah, I have some topics about release engineering, uh, the recent work that the team did. So. Uh, the first uh, point that I would like to uh, bring up is the July patch releases that were originally scheduled for tomorrow are now delayed to the next week, to Wednesday, July 19, uh, to be able to get all the PRs that we have merged, because uh, this is going to include the last planned 124 release. Uh, so we want to include the PRs like Go updates, uh, and in general, uh, we also were asked to merge some cherry picks past the deadline. We decide considering everything to delay the release. So we are going to do it next week. Uh, this is speaking of releases. Also cherry pick deadline as mentioned in the announcement is also moved and it is this Friday, July 40. Uh, the next uh, topic that I would like to bring up before, uh, do we have any question about releases? Okay, uh, so uh, the next topic is that I'm not sure if we mentioned it in some meeting before, but because I was not able to attend the last one, but Sasha and I think Carlos, I hope I didn't miss anyone, are working on updating the base image to Debian 12 to bookworm for all the images that we use. Uh, there was some announcement on mailing list about that, uh, just as an FAI and something to pay attention to. Uh, this is still a work in progress. I don't know if Sasha has any update about that one. Hey, yeah, so we are working on uh, updating most of the images. Um, we had a discussion about cube cross. Um, we will probably stick with all the cube cross or bullseye related cube cross images to all the release branches and we'll update it to bookworm only for 128. But this will be part of the release notes. And yeah, I think it will take me some time to update all, update all of those images, but yeah, we, we are not in a hurry, right? So thank you for taking care of that. And thank you for the update. Uh, do we have any question about that topic before proceeding to the next one? Okay. And uh, the next topic is that we had the 128.0 alpha 4 release last week. Uh, it was released successfully, but there were some minor hiccups that might be worth mentioning, uh, especially if we run into something similar next week. Uh, so the first one is that uh, generating the S-bomb was showing some sort of uh, null pointer exception. 
And this is uh, fixed by Adolfo, but I think we still need to include this change in Corel. Generally, just running the release again is what's needed to unstuck. Uh, another thing is that we are running it to rate limits again when doing the image promotion. This is the unfortunate part. I am not exactly sure why is that the case that might need some additional investigation, but this is something that might happen again. Let's cross fingers that it's not going to happen, but we will see. And the last part is that some user, some release managers are having problem with SendGrid. I don't know if you should eventually consider getting rid of SendGrid, but generally that tends to be often problems, so not too bad. And the last point from my side is that 126 to 124 release branches are updated to go 1.20. Uh, thanks to Carlos for taking care of that. I think that uh, we only need to merge some final PRs like updating the publishing bot, although publishing bot is currently down or broken. Uh, we are waiting for that to be fixed before updating any rules. Uh, and I think from uh, my side, that's everything that I am aware of, but if anyone else has anything to add, that would be great. Great, thank you, Marco. Um, do we have anyone else with release? engineering updates i don't believe so because everyone that is involved has already been mentioned <laughs> um okay so with that in mind let's move forward with the release team uh updates uh we're one week away from code freeze uh who is here? yeah uh, that's me oh. um not much update from the release team uh we yeah, we're one week away from code freeze also have our first retro next week Sweet, exciting. Um, okay, so we went very fast with the agenda today. So uh, does anyone have anything else other than open discussion items? Okay, so let's go to open discussion. Uh, Marco, OBS updates. Yeah, it's me again. Uh, so I wanted to provide some updates regarding how are we doing with OBS and what's the plan and how is it still going to look like. Uh, so the first uh, part where we stopped before me getting away was um, trying to figure out like how to connect uh, OBS with the release pipeline and to cut, uh, to publish packages to OBS when we are cutting a release. And that part is done. We have been actually running that in uh, the pipe, in the release pipeline for some time and packages are getting built and published successfully by OBS. Now, uh, there are some important parts that needs to be done. And the first one is especially being testing, like when we, we're implementing the initial part. Uh, the focus was on getting it worked and not on getting it test. So we need to step back and to implement some tests for that. And this is like the one of the highest priority tasks going to 128 release. Uh, besides that, uh, the second high priority task that we have is sorting out infrastructure. And this is something that I have been working in the last on in the last few days on that. Uh, how is it going to work? It is that because the OBS platform has sort of limited bandwidth and we don't know uh, how much bandwidth do we need for packages because we are using Google Infra and they're not really able to provide us any stats. Uh, I already checked with Ben Elder and with Google Build Admins, but there's no way to get any usage information. So to make sure that we don't overload the OBS platform and that we that we can provide some guaranteed stability so that users can always pull packages, we are going to take off some load, load from OBS and like to distribute it between their mirrors and our own mirrors. So they're still going to build packages. They're going to host them. They're going to serve them. But we are also going to serve them. OBS is going to be one single front end, one single repo. It is just that they will also point to our own mirrors. Uh, the plan is that we will only mirror our own packages. So we will not have additional packages. Uh, and the way it works is that it is basically going to be S3 bucket, nothing too special. Uh, and we will have some CDN in front of that S3 bucket. 
Uh, the CDN solution that we are going to use is going to be CloudFront at the beginning. If we get some additional bandwidth, we are going to use Fastly uh, because we are using Fastly for DLKS IO. Uh, however, we have only 10 petabytes per month and DLKS IO is going to require at least six. So right now we can't use Fastly but we requested that they bump us to 20 petabytes per month. If that happens, we might be able to switch for packages uh, to use fast. Otherwise, we will uh, continue with CloudFront. Uh, everything is on AVS. We have the donation of $3 million of cloud credits. We are mm, close to a million right now with CI and everything. So. 2 million is about left. So I think that should be more than enough to fit packages and everything else, especially that hopefully OBS is going to take some part of the load as well. There are mirrors and also we have mirrors. So we can sustain all the load. We can guarantee that packages are up. And yeah, that's basically the plan. I'm going to share a PR for the uh, info part. Uh, so I shared it in chat. I have some reviews. Uh, Carlos reviewed it, and uh, Tim Bannister, and uh, also Patrick. Uh, we are going to, if I get approvals, I would merge it tomorrow, let's say by afternoon or noon, and I would apply uh, those changes. And then I will work with the OBS team to uh, connect everything. So that will be the plan. So if you want to take a look, Please take a look. As soon as we merge that, it's better as we can uh, figure it out and make sure we have everything ready for 128, which is a little bit more than a month away. So not a lot of time left. Uh, also, yeah, I am not sure if I have anything else. I will be working on docs and on feature blog posts. I'm going to propose that. So, yeah, I may, I'm going to make sure that we, once we are ready, that we try to like get the word out to make sure that users migrate. I also had some discussions with CNCF. CNCF is going to help us as well when we are ready. They can include some blog posts and stuff like that. So we will have some support from them to make sure that we get the word out to make sure that we get users to migrate and as soon as we are ready, this is something we can do. So let's see. That sounds good. Um, I saw that uh, in during the week, uh, someone, I forget who was, <laughs> someone from Infra um, wanted to double check with you uh, where things were getting uploaded. Was that sorted out? I think um, it was sorted out. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, but yeah, other than that, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Any other topics? Thank you, Marco. This was great. This is great. Any other topics? No? Okay. In three, two, one. Well, thank you very I much for attending. Oh, okay. Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I have a question about how do we determine which projects get to be lucky enough to become master blocking and release blocking? Uh, uh, I'm asking that question because I'm in the middle of effectively rewriting a lot of the node EDE jobs. Some of them already qualify under that definition and others don't. So I was wondering if there was a doc somewhere that talked about that. There's some docs about that. I'm trying to find them right now, but yeah, we definitely have some docs about this one. Uh, somewhere in the sick release repository, probably. Yeah. Okay. We will find it definitely. Yeah, we'll share it with you. Uh, I was going to uh, say because um, I'm going to write. I'm working on something, um, and. I don't want to introduce too many release blocking jobs, um, but we do need a variety, though, much bigger than the current set that we have. Yeah, yeah I just shared some link in chat. I think that should be the criteria that we have for 
release blocky chops and what's acquired. I am not sure if it is like 100% up to date, but if you find anything that is not, uh, please let us know and we can figure it out. Okay. Yeah, also oh. these are the, the general guidelines, uh, but I remember that a few times uh, when someone has required to move um, one category to the other, either blocking to informing or informing to blocking, there can be discussions about it. It's not like set in stone depending on different variables. So um, okay. the guys should be good. All right, I'll I'll look at that and keep working on those jobs. Cool. Thanks, Mohammed. Um, anyone else? And any other questions or topics? Okay. So now three, two, one. Let's go. Thank you very much for being here, and uh, thank you everyone who provided updates. And welcome, Amit. Uh, have a good rest of your day or week and we'll see you next week bye okay. thanks everybody